Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and, and children. I had to say that because my daughter's in the audience. <laughs> For the last 30 years, no one's really cared that much about what I do. That's because for the last 30 years, I've been trying to build artificial intelligence, trying to build machines that do tasks that we humans think require thinking. And for most of that time, the idea that we could build machines that think has been so remote that you only heard about it in futuristic Hollywood movies. But now you can't open a newspaper without reading multiple stories about how AI is starting to succeed and take over some new task in our lives. Computers that can play the ancient Chinese game of Go better than any human master. Computers that can read x-rays faster and more accurately than any human doctor. Computers that can translate English into Mandarin. So not surprisingly, many people are starting to wonder, well, where is this all going to end? Now, you don't need to worry. The robots are not going to take over anytime soon. Just watch my robots upstairs. <laughs> we have 50, 100, or even more years before computers are as smart as us. The machines that we can build today are not very intelligent. They have no desires of their own. They do only what we tell them to do. Nevertheless, if we focus on a narrow task, we can often get them to work at superhuman level. And that has profound consequences for our society. It's estimated that there are perhaps less than 10,000 people on the planet like me with a PhD in AI. So perhaps a couple of hundred here in Australia. I, as a result, get a call from the media almost every day to understand where is this taking us? And most often of all, they want to talk about AI and ethics. I even had a journalist from Women's Weekly come and interview me recently. <laughs> I decided that was officially peak AI. <laughs> but amongst all these calls, a couple of months ago, I had a moment of revelation. I was taking calls from journalists about Google's latest demo, Duplex, their new personal assistant. In case you haven't heard it, I want to play your recording to show you what we can do with AI today. Can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. In case you haven't worked out, it was the computer that was making the booking. I was very impressed. Computers can have simple conversations now. They can <laughs> ask questions, book haircuts, book restaurant tables. I'm an art just like a human. Many journalists were understandably concerned about computers pretending to be humans. There are plenty of Hollywood movies to suggest this could end badly. And then I started, started to take calls from other journalists about Amazon's face recognition software, which was to be used at the upcoming royal wedding. Many journalists were understandably concerned about issues of privacy. What if such software fell into the wrong hands? Again, there are plenty of movies to suggest this could end badly. And that's when I had my revelation. In fact, it was two revelations. First, it's now a full-time, 24-7 job, just answering the media's questions about the latest ethical fails of Silicon Valley. <laughs> and second, most of this is just old-fashioned bad behavior. Knocking on someone's door and pretending to be someone else is old-fashioned bad behavior. Any company that employed people to do just this would be behaving badly. So getting a computer to metaphorically knock on your door and pretend to be someone else is bad behavior. We don't need any new ethics to decide this. 
As a second example, consider um, labeling black people as gorillas, as sadly Google Photos did recently. We don't need any new ethics to decide that, that this is bad behavior. And as a third and final example, consider Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Now, much of the media's attention has focused on the fact that Facebook helped Cambridge Analytica to steal lots of private information about us. And of course, stealing private information about us is bad behavior. But there's another side to the story, which is that Cambridge Analytica then used that stolen information to try and manipulate how people voted in the presidential election. Less well known, Facebook had two full-time employees embedded in the Cambridge Analytica offices in Tucson, Arizona, helping to manipulate the vote. In fact, Cambridge Analytica was one of Facebook's best customers during the presidential election. So it's hard to understand why the Facebook executives sounded so surprised when they testified in front of Congress about what happened. Facebook was a very active player in trying to manipulate how people voted. And of course, manipulating how people vote has been bad behavior for thousands of years, ever since the ancient Greeks. We don't need any new ethics to decide that. New technology lets us behave badly, faster, quicker, cheaper, easier, but it's still bad behavior. Now, just because we don't need much in the way of new ethics to deal with technology doesn't mean that we should sit on our hands and do nothing. The six biggest companies today by market capitalization are now, for the first time, all technology companies. Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, Facebook, and Alibaba. And with that immense wealth comes immense impact and immense responsibility. We have always had to regulate markets. Unfettered capitalism, unfortunately, goes to excess. We need to regulate companies to ensure that they act in line with the public good, and not just to improve the stock options of their CEO. <laughs> it, it is uh, undoubtedly a difficult time, but we will get there. We will, in the past, we have regulated technology. We've, in the past, we've regulated big oil, big, big pharma, big tobacco, even now the big banks. We must now wake up to the idea that we need to regulate the technology companies. In this way, the future will be bright. The computers can take the sweat. They can do the dirty, the dull, the difficult, and the dangerous. And we can sit back and enjoy the finer things in life. Thank you. Thank you.